Hello, hello, and welcome to a new video. This is Wind Waker Unflooded, a 3D modeling fan art project where we are bringing the world of Hyrule to life as you've never seen it before. Of course, you know, if you've played The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, uh, you know that all the islands of the Great Sea are actually the mountaintops of Hyrule, but we never get to fully explore Hyrule in the game. We only get to see the small portion of it near the castle. And, and I know that so many of you have wanted to to fully see that world realized in the art style of the Wind Waker. Of course, Hyrule has appeared in later games in Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, Breath of the Wild, and I, I've loved exploring Hyrule in those games, but I've always wondered what would Hyrule look like in the art style of The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. So this is that project, lining things up with the islands of the Great Sea, showing you what the entire land would look like as you've never seen it before. This is Wind Waker Unflooded. <laughs> so welcome. Welcome to the video, y'all. Um, this was a a really big viewer suggestion. A lot of people were curious about Twilight Princess's city in the sky. I mean, it's it's one of the most striking locations from Twilight Princess. And, and I've said this before, I think, on, in the, on, on the channel, is that, like, Twilight Princess's dungeons, man, like, it, it always packs more into that game than I feel like a game could hold. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and the City and Sky is one of those points where I, I, you know, I have that feeling of like, oh, wow, this is still the same game? Like, those later, like, Twilight Princess dungeons, just like the adventure that they send you on is, is incredible. And it, it always makes me feel that way of like, how'd they pack all of this in? Um, as the City and the Sky is just such an iconic location. It feels otherworldly. And I was really excited to try to bring it to life within the art style of The Wind Waker. Uh, I'll go ahead and say what made this possible uh, was the contribution of some concept art by Darth Blam. So I'm going to put that on screen right now. Uh, that was a lot of help. And I, you know, I, I don't, um, I don't like go by the concept art like pixel for pixel, but it was a really big help in trying to figure out the general aesthetic of this area. That, that really helps me kind of narrow down, well, like, you know, the city in the sky, like, Twilight Princess has has its own art style. How do you kind of cartoonify it a little bit? What shapes do you emphasize? Of course, you emphasize those like egg egg like shapes. Um, and to me, that was just like really well thought out. And you know, I, I wanted to I guess just kind of like stay pretty close in some ways to the general layout of the original Twilight Princess dungeon. It's not exactly the same. Uh, I kind of simplify some things, but like that was my main driving force was trying to keep it pretty close to what you see in the game, kind of, uh, more along that design. Um, but also it's like the concept art had these like floating, like orbiting eggs, right? And, you know, like those were kind of in the original map, but like just kind of having them orbit on their own, I was like, that's a really striking design decision. And that was, that was really, you know, that, that was critical as, as we say. So thank you, Darth Blam for the concept art. I, I really enjoyed, uh, being able to have some concept artists on board contributing for different areas and that's really helped me approach different locations it, it helped akala citadel uh, it's helping me as i'm remodeling zora's domain um and so so big shout out to darth blam ec henry has contributed concept art that's been really helpful and you know i'll just go ahead and say that if you're an artist you know or a 3d artist if you're interested in contributing 3d models or concept art um or textures and you, you know if you want to work on the project and you know collaborate you know, I, I have an open door there. I would love to work with you. I'd love to bring more people onto the team. So this is an open invitation. Feel free to shoot me an email. I think that's on the about section of my YouTube page. Feel free to email me if you want to get involved. Um, also, like I, I put out a a, uh, a call recently for artists in general for creating pieces for a Hyrule museum. So if you have any ideas about what that could be, feel free to shoot me an email as well. Because, you know, I, I wanted specifically to see more tapestries in the style of the Wind Waker's prologue um, depicting new events. So using that art style from the prologue of the Wind Waker, but creating more tapestries depicting the events of Skyward Sword or the Minish Cap or some other events from Ocarina of Time um, and kind of the prologue to Ocarina of Time, right? So like that was, that, that was really helpful and I've already received some great pieces that are really inspiring. I'm so excited to show that artwork to y'all. Uh, but also, yeah, like if you're an artist and, you know, you know, maybe uh, concept art for the for the, you know, for the world building project isn't necessarily up your alley. But you're like, oh, I think I could contribute a piece to the Hyrule Museum. 
um I, you know i'd love to see some more artwork right you know and i think there's a lot of freedom in the kind of art style it could have as long as it generally feels like it fits within you know the world of toon link right um but even you know the wind waker has stained glass windows and it has paintings and it has tapestries and i think there's a lot of freedom as to how you can interpret that tune style in various ways so you know I, i'd love to see more artwork from y'all and i'd love to yeah because i guess like I, I you know i've always felt that way is i'd love to be able to be more collaborative and open to the community and i think it's just always been a question of like well how do i how can i uh, incorporate that you know what parts of the world allow for artwork and i think you know i think a museum is a great way to to open the doors to more artwork so like I said, feel free to comment down below or shoot me an email if you have any ideas. I am all ears. But I think for now, it's time for a short message. So we'll be back after the break. See you then. If you want to be able to support me as a creator, there's several ways that you can do that. Become a member on Patreon. It gives you access to exclusive bonus features and early access content in all of my filmmaking projects. Stuff like early access to scripts that I'm writing, storyboards, previs, rough cuts, and music that I compose. I'm a composer, and any music that you've heard in the background of this video was my music. So go to Spotify or Apple Music or wherever you listen to music and type in Joe Kendrick. That's J-O-E-K-E-N-D-R-I-C-K. -E -E Look up Joe Kendrick on Spotify. And we're back. Welcome, 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 welcome back to the city in the sky. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun modeling this, and I don't know, it's like it's it's a, it was a pretty simple build. I did simplify some things. But I guess I want to talk a little bit about um, part of what was also suggested was not just the city in the sky as a location, but I know that after the release of Tears of the Kingdom, you know, there are several comments asking about sky islands in general, right? Um, with the idea that, you know, that some of y'all were saying, um, well, like, what if the city in the sky or, or like, what if there were sky islands that we didn't know were sky islands in the Wind Waker, right? Like, what if one of the islands of the Great Sea, like, sure, it looks like a regular island, but you take away the, the water and, oh, what well, do you know? It was floating the whole time. And there, that was an idea that some of y'all had. And so that is brought to life here in this project as well. It's not like an elevated sky island, but it is a floating island, right? You just didn't know it, you know, because you couldn't see all of it before. So, yeah, I thought the Isle, Isle, of, Isle of Steel would be a good choice. It's a fortified kind of fortress looking thing. And it does like, you know, I always got the idea that it was built after the flood. There's a couple things like the sea platforms as well that I feel that way about. But also it's like working within that original Wind Waker map is more fun for me. Even if there's things you could log logic out and go, ah, oh, that was probably not built until after the flood. I do like the idea of using those, the, f the whole map as it is and using those limitations and kind of thinking about, well, this is a fortified little structure. What could it be a part of? And I felt like the city in the sky would be a good way to extrapolate from that fortification. Um, I do want to read a comment too um, that I got in, it, it was a couple weeks ago probably as, as far as this video is coming out. Um, it's, it's a couple weeks ago as I'm recording, um, but I want to read it because they were talking about some ideas for the city in the sky and I just want to kind of highlight this comment um, because I thought that they had some great points. You know, I put like out a, just like a post on the community page about like, hey, I'm going to start building the city in the sky soon. Let me know if y'all have any thoughts. And this commenter says, Well, the architecture of the city in the sky is definitely very unique with a lot of curved, mostly white and golden surfaces, sort of following some semblance to Islamic architecture, further amplified by the inclusion of a lot of greenery within the buildings themselves, very common practice in Islamic architecture. This sort of alien-like Middle Eastern architecture is then mixed with a lot of machinery, quite possibly feeding the to the golden uh, propeller scattered around the underside and roofs of the whole city. Link arrives for the first time to the city by landing on some sort of water pond, which is next to the uh, Uka shop, and then proceeds to go through the dungeon, which is centered around metal and wind, including the enemies. There's a bridge connecting two areas, which Argarok uh, destroys during Twilight Princess, a tall hollow tower, which Link has to descend from, and many other places, but of course you could take your own artistic interpretation of the place. However, I'm definitely excited to see uh, what you will do with Argarok's boss arena. I love how simple yet ominous those pillars look. Uh, aiming directly at the sky. I thought this was a great comment. Of course, just like summarizing the general atmosphere of the city in the sky, you know, and reminding me of some of the structures there. As you can see from the time lapse, I had to keep a no clip open just the whole time for reference uh, for the location. But I guess like I loved this comment as well, just pointing out the fact that like there was 
you know, I, I didn't, I never thought of like Islamic architecture as a reference for the city in the sky, but like thinking about it, it totally kind of clicked with me and I was like, oh yeah, I see it, right? And I love the idea of this kind of floating Hagia Sophia and um, I don't, I don't think I totally got there within my version of the model. I think I kind of ended up like kind of focusing more on the fortification aspect and the general shapes of Darth Blam's concept art. But, you know, I really do like, you know, have a really, I, I love like beautiful Islamic architecture. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think that that really is a great reference for the original design. And, and that really got my gears turning about the kind of, the kind of shapes that I wanted to focus on. So I really appreciate that comment. I wanted to thank y'all for uh, for posting it. I really do appreciate when I see comments that I can t I can tell how much y'all are interested in the world of Hyrule and the creation of this project. And I really do encourage y'all to comment down below any ideas you have, feedback you have on the project, notes, criticisms, concerns, um, or ideas you have about different locations you wanna see me work on, or just different things you wanna see in the world. So I really encourage that and I'm so excited about just how inspired y'all have been, and that inspires me. So thank you all for commenting, and, you know, I, I'm going to start wrapping up the video. I've already told you how you can support me as a creator, but do feel free to become a Patreon member. Uh, that really helps the creation of everything that I do, and it gives you exclusive behind-the-scenes access to all of my filmmaking projects. And listen to my music on Spotify. I have music on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever you listen to music. Look up Joe Kendrick. That's J-O-E-K-E-N-D-R-I-C-K. Look me up on Spotify or Apple Music. Like I said, wherever you listen to music, I uh, do soundtrack style stuff, and that'll be a big help. But for now, I'll let y'all go.